Okay, so welcome to the first screencast for t paper two, 2015. So obviously it's question one we're doing. Um, I would suggest having a go with it yourself. Now, um, I assume you're going to pause and be back. Just, I personally, I don't like probability. Okay. Um, there's a few times when the qu questions are just, can, can, for me, from my mind anyway, confuse me, or either under answer or over answer. So I'd say be very, very careful. The only way to get around um, dealing with both statistics or more importantly probability is practice. The more practice you do, the more familiar you become with the questions. So let's get stuck in. So question one, a bank issues a unique six digit password okay, to each of its online customers. The password may contain any of the numbers from zero to nine. So let's, ex let's explore that. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's 10 digits there. Okay. So I would say first thing, look, once you've realized that, 10 digits okay um any mention of 10 could potentially get you the the the, the, the mid part of the mid partial here four um it's a six digit password so six digits okay now if i was doing this i'd try i try and make it more clear on top that the six digits was zero to nine just they they don't think i'm just writing down numbers okay now the password Okay, for example, the following is a valid password, 071737. So, the, how many different passwords are possible? And the most, actually, I skipped over this. The really important thing is numbers can be repeated. So, repetition allowed. Okay. Now, if you, there's two different methods of doing this. I'm, I'm going to go on to the, the answer I built in here. And I'm going to do the box method first, which I think is probably the way that most people would be taught it or would do it. Okay. So you have six boxes to represent the six digits of the password. Now in your first option, there's 10 possible choices. Okay. Now if there was no repetition allowed, then you'd have only nine left after because you've used one of them. But repetition is allowed here. So you could do the second one. Okay. So what they're actually saying here is what's the probability of getting or um, what's the number of selections of getting a password with 10 digits? and 10 more digits and 10 more digits and the probability uh, you hear the word and it always means multiply so that gives you the thing just 10 choices in each choice um you're making a choice and a choice and a choice it's not or or would be plus okay so and is multiply so you multiply the probabilities well, the, uh, no, i'm probably saying the probability wrong there uh, it's 10, 10 times 10 whatever uh, and you end up with a million okay so i'm assuming right six zeros yeah now that's one method, okay. You could use the formula method. Now this is not normally, I don't remember this really being focused on in second level books, but the formula here is n to the power of r, okay. Now that's the same thing as 10 to the power of 6. So n is the number of cho choices, which is 10. r is the number of choices you have to make, okay, which is 6, okay. Now if there's no repetition allowed, um, you'd have to wonder, does, does order matter or not? And then you'd have to either use NPR or NCR formulas. Okay, but that's not what's happened here because it said the numbers, the repetitions allowed. So it's part A, or 10 marks. Now part B, part one, how many passwords do not, okay, not contain any zero? So if you think about it, well, if I can't contain a zero in the first choice, if you'd open your, your, your boxes again, your six boxes, in my first choice, what's the answer here? Um, I only have nine, cho nine choices because I can't choose zero. It's still, I have to make a selection and a selection, so it's still multiplied, but each time I can't make a zero as a choice. So it becomes nine times whatever. Now, using the n to the power of r formula, I have nine choices I can make. I still have to make six choices, so it's nine to the power of six. Either way, you get the same answer. Okay, there's just two different methods. Now, say, the answer is feasible here, but it's not too complicated if you get what's going on. One password is selected at random from all possible passwords. So all possible passwords is a, is a million, okay? One password is selected at random from them. What is the probability that this password contains at least one zero? So it, the 531441 is it contains no zeros. So take that away from a million, we'll give you the amount that do contain a zero. We might contain all zeros for you, know, um, but at least one. So I've written that out there in words, but I've done the calculation on top. Now, you're looking for a probability. So probability is always using the formula here um, of number of actual outcomes divided by number of possible outcomes. You're not given that formula ever in the, in the, in the math tables or whatever, anywhere. I would always remember this formula by 
deriving it from flicking a coin. What's the probability of getting heads, for example, if I flick a coin? Well, if I flick a coin, how many things are going to happen? Well, only one. Okay. How many things could happen? Okay, so you're immediately going to get a heads or tails, um, but it could be heads or tails, because two things could happen, one of them will happen. So you get one over two, which is a half, and we all know that there's a 50-50 chance of flicking heads or tails, okay, in any one outcome. So the password, probability of a password with at least one zero, okay, is the number of things that can happen, which is four, six, eight, five, five, nine, I just calculated that, divided by the number of things that could happen, okay, which is a million, and I end up there, this just to bring this one point across um, six places. So one, two, three, four, five, six, it ends up here. So yeah, in the R use calculator. And I end up with the probability of 0.468559. Now they don't say they want that rounded, but look, 0.46 is probably as much as you need. Um, but I would always give the full answer on the, the space in the calculator. Um, so that's part two, uh, part B. That's about 10 matches with five marks left. Now, John is issued with one such password from the bank. Each time John wants to access his account online, the bank's website requires him to input three of his password digits into the boxes provided. For example, he may be asked for the second, fourth, and fifth. Okay, that's just, that's just an example. In how many different ways can the bank select the three required boxes? So, does the order matter here? It doesn't matter which ones they pick. They're going to still get the choice. And... There are six choices. Pick three. So I think it's going to be six C three. Okay, yeah. So the answers here. Now the when you, you're using there's two forms here. Okay, now they can be written as this or written as this. I normally do have to write them like that. Okay, but you could be have an N C R problem or an N P R. Now, P stands for permutation. C stands for combination. Now, in the basic difference is, in a combination, the order of what you're select, selecting doesn't matter. And that can be tricky to figure out sometimes. Um, that's where one of my problems lies. The other option here is NPR, which is when the order does matter. Okay, so the N stands for the number of, of uh, things you have to pick from. C is the choice, and R is the number of things you have to actually pick. So we have six things we can pick from. They're picking three. But it doesn't matter if it's this one, second, fourth, or fifth, or second, um, third, and fourth. You know, first, second, third, it doesn't matter, okay? So it's six, choose three, put it to the calculator, and you get 20, okay? Now, there's a different formula than this, but I don't think it'll be asked to pass the certain level. So they're just looking for, do you get the, 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 the difference between um, a combination uh, and permutation? Now, there's a trick you can do here. Let's say I didn't know. Okay, I just, for whatever reason, I couldn't pick which one was which. Now, I could write down both answers, okay, and you could argue, oh, that's cheating, okay, now, whatever 6P3 is, I think it's 120, whatever. Um, the, so let's put a number there. Okay, now you have two answers given, that's not really allowed, but the, you're told in the Martin conference that if the person has the answer on the page, you have to give the marks. Now, as long as one of them is the, or the two of the, uh, it's, the it's the declared answer, okay? Um, or that it's it's one only one answer is declared. So let's say I actually thought that this was wrong. No, it is. That's the right one. Okay, put a line through it. Okay, and I'm declaring this as my answer. You should always suppose put something to declare your answer, just to make it easier on the marker. No, I was wrong. So it's not six p three, but. I can still see this here. It's not scribbled out. It's not typexed out. I can still see it. Therefore, I'm, I'm supposed to give full marks. Okay. So in a case where there's a 50-50 chance of choice of what to do, and you just can't think of which it is, do both, cross one out, you'll still get the marks. Okay. So I hope that helps. There's part C. Uh, that should be the end of it. So thanks very much. It's part uh, question one, paper two, 2015. Thank you.